welcome back to Adobe Live and welcome to Draw This In Your Style. Thank you all so much for joining us. Today we are joined by the wonderful illustrator and brush creator, Kyle T. Webster. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm fine, Cody. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here and to do some drawing with you today. Yeah, of course, it's gonna be super fun. We have a very fun uh, theme I think you guys are going to really enjoy today. Um, but before we get into that, if you guys have never been to Draw This In Your Style, never heard of it before, basically it is when an illustrator will create a piece of artwork, upload it online, and invite everyone and anyone to recreate it in their own personal artistic style. And basically we do that on this show, but with a twist. So before the stream, we came up with a theme and we each created an illustration. And now on stream, we are going to swap them and draw each other's in our own artistic style. But before I show you guys what we're working on, I'm going to hand it over to Kyle so he can give you a little bit of an intro to who he is and the kind of artwork that he makes. Okay, thanks. Well, yeah, again, I wanna say thank you for having me. I actually um, lobbied to be on this show. I wrote to Cody and asked if I could be a guest because I think it's such a cool idea. I really love it. Um, and I've seen these things online where people post an illustration and say, draw this in your style. Um, I never actually had the opportunity to really do it myself. And I just think this is a really great format. And Cody, of course, is a perfect host and artist for this. So thanks again. Um, and I work uh, right now for Adobe, as you may know, making uh, brushes and also working on drawing and painting initiatives like Fresco and things for Photoshop and whatnot. Um, today, I'll actually be working in Fresco and show you a few tips and tricks with that. Uh, but prior to that, I was working as an illustrator for about a dozen years of my own, my own business, um, doing what you'd expect, you know, work for editorial and um, advertising and book and whatnot. Um, and prior to that, I worked as a graphic designer uh, where I honed my illustration skills because we had a lot of different clients and I had to work with a lot of different styles. Um, so that I kind of became a style chameleon, which is funny for this show because <laughs> I'm going to narrow it down to one and make it work. Um, you have to find your style. <laughs> I do. I still haven't really, I don't know if I've ever found it quite yet, but um, the other thing is before that I was a web designer and I hated it, but <laughs> it did help me learn some coding stuff, which actually has been, you know, handy ever since I, I learned it. So, you know, sometimes the stuff you hate to learn comes back and helps you out later. But anyway, that's me and um, I'm ready to draw. Yeah, that's so amazing. If you guys uh, would like, please feel free to follow Kyle on Instagram. Um, and also, if you guys have a CC sub, you can get all of Kyle's uh, Photoshop brushes for free. And they are also compatible with Fresco as well. So Yes, they're easy let's... to get. They're just not so discoverable all the time. So we can help right. you out there. <laughs> yeah. So if we hop on over to um, our drawing programs here, I'm going to be working in Photoshop. Kyle is working in Fresco. Um, so this is the artwork that Kyle drew that I am going to be recreating. And this is the artwork that I drew that Kyle is going to be recreating. And if you guys would like to recreate either of these in your own artistic style, feel free to do so. You can upload it to Instagram with the hashtag Adobe Live DTIYS, or you can post it to the Photoshop Discord under the Draw This In Your Style channel. And we will be going over a few of those entries towards the end of the stream. So if you guys would like us to go over yours uh, before the end of the stream, uh, feel free to post it before the end <laughs> and we might be able to get to yours as well. Um, so we are gonna just go ahead and get into this now. Um, so Kyle, when you first, ha so have you ever, you've never done a draw this in your style before? I have Correct. not. I mean, apart from me being inspired by artists I like from who are dead, like, um, Hergé who created Tintin or mm -hmm. I've, I've drawn Tintin as a character a few times with just various approaches. Um, uh, otherwise, no, I've never actually intentionally set about to do an illustration someone else did and try and change it stylistically. This is really fun. Yeah. Yeah. So you've done fan art, but not necessarily recreated somebody else's illustration, right? That's exactly sure. right. Yeah. Good so, distinction there. So what's your thought process right now? How do you think you're going to attack this since you've never done it before? So I want to take what you've drawn and I'm going to put a little perspective in it. So I'm, I'm going to change the um, angle of this stovepipe uh, stove that you created. I want to actually um, rotate it 
And I have photo reference for that. And it's going to be a slightly different design, although I'm, going to, I'm also going to modify the design of the photo myself a little bit as well. Um, but I do want to, so I'm adding a, a two point perspective angle to it for one thing. Um, your illustration is straight on. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'm also going to adapt this line art style that I used for the illustration that you're going to be drawing um, and draw the pig in that way. I noticed too that with your pig, you it was anatomically correct with the the, the hands <laughs> yes. or the what, what do you call hooves? Hooves, yes. Um, and I'm I'm tempted to carry that over, though I might just do what I did and and anthropomorphize this pig to the point where it's just got hands and stuff. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yet. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of the main change is this, this the drawing style I'm going to use. You may also notice that I used a halftone pattern mm -hmm. um, in that drawing. I might want to try and find a way to incorporate that in this drawing as well. Um, and there's a there's a special technique I used with layer blending modes for the line art uh, and for the color that I'm also going to try and recreate. So if long story short, the illustration that I produced for you to illustrate today, I'm going to try and make it appear as if this, this illustration I'm going to create today could easily sort of fit with that illustration as part right. of the series. That's kind of what I mean. Very cool. How about you? I, um, I was just about to say, I really love uh, your textures and your blending modes that you used for your line art because it looks like it's printed, like it looks like a vintage print. And I think that that is such a beautiful um, look. And uh, I love when you do that to your work. Oh, thank you. It's yeah. pretty easy to do in Photoshop and, you know, with Fresco with layer blending modes. I often say that digital art is a lot like cheating. Um, but, <laughs> you know, you can't cheat if you don't know how. So it's still a good thing to know what these skills are and and, and uh, share them with everybody. Like, how do you do that? So we yeah. can show along the way. So for me, the technique that I am going to go about is I am actually probably going to kind of redraw my pig character that I did. Um, I'm going to keep the hooves. I'm going to kind of like stay true to those um, kind of characteristics that make my style my style. Um, so, but I am going to change up the clothes. I'm going to do the, the same clothes that you did. Um, and I don't know, we'll just kind of see where it goes. Um, for my posing, I usually kind of have a little bit more of a stiff posing for my work. Um, that wasn't originally intentional, but it is now. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so uh, I usually sometimes for these streams start uh, with a little bit of a, a an under sketch before the stream, but I am starting from a completely blank canvas today. So I'm figuring it out as we go, really. That makes two of us. I'm, I'm going to be sketching here for just to start with. And you mentioned the, the pose. I think, you know, I'm, I'm really heavily influenced by animation. Mm -hmm. And one of the first books my parents ever got me was a book of drawings uh, from animation. And they are, you know, and these were mid-century mm -hmm. drawings. So you can imagine a lot of energy and action and gesture in the drawings. And I think that really stuck with me. I was only nine years old at the time as a thing that just kind of always comes up uh, in my, in my drawings. Um, not always, but if I am drawing in this way with line art and everything, I'm always trying to think about that. Definitely. Um, and I also did teach for nine years, a figure drawing class at the university here. Mm. And I think that also reinforced all that, um, in my, in my drawings, um, because we would do these short drawings to warm up always for the first 30 minutes or so of class, mm -hmm. two minutes, you know, and the models would strike these interesting poses. You try and capture the gesture. So that maybe is something I'll try and incorporate here as well. But we'll just see how it goes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and in Fresco, you can import images, of course, to your canvas. I'm going to grab uh, a drawing right here. And I also wanted to say hey to everyone in chat because the chat is going crazy right now. So many oh, people wow. in the chat right now. RB, Dorina, Christelle, Steve, Sam, Bruce. I think Hawk was in here earlier too. Viola, Christelle, thank you guys so much for joining. Claire, hello, hello, hello. Thank you all. I'm so sorry I haven't looked at the chat yet. Um, but I, if you guys have any questions and I miss the questions, feel free to repost them and I will do my best to, now that we're done with the intros and stuff, we're going to start working. Feel free to just throw your questions in chat and uh, we will do our best to answer them. 
Yes. And thanks for watching that chat. I appreciate it. And mm -hmm. hi, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, I, I just brought in some photos for reference, and um, I have your illustration here. Um, and the, that there's something I wanted to show everybody that I'm going to do right off the bat, which is for me that stovepipe. Uh, you call it a stovepipe stove? That sounds, or is it just a stovepipe oven? Oven, stovepipe oven. oven. A, a wood, wood burning, wood burning oven. Yeah. Because it also has a, a, a surface. Yes. Can you cook on both surfaces, the, like yes. inside? Yes, you can cook on the top. So the top is the stove. The inside is the oven. Stovepipe oven. Okay. Of course. Thank you. So that you We're have a design. We're learning things today. <laughs> I am. You have a distinct design here for yours that um, I'm going to be doing a similar. I found an, uh, an image of a similar stove, but not identical. Mm -hmm. And the thing I like is that you have over here um, this shelf you know, where someone could put, you know, a, uh, a little thing that's cooling or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. And the, the photo I have does not have that shelf. I'm going to add that shelf, but I do have, and this is something I want to show everybody because it's really amazing. Um, I do have this photo right here of this stovepipe oven. And there's a new feature that we have in Fresco, which released, I think about a week or two ago. And um, what it does is you can import a photo like I'm going to do here and you can set up a perspective grid based on that photo automatically. Fresco will look at the lines in the photo and then instantly create a perspective grid for you. So um, what I want to do for my sketch is I want to start by placing the oven where I want it in the composition. And um, in your illustration, the pig is standing next to the oven and I think what I'm going to do is swap it so that the oven is on the left and I'm going to have the pig on the right. Okay. Um, and holding up a, a, uh, his, his cupcake that he's just baked. Um, and that's, that's what I'm thinking right now. So rather than have to try and get the perspective all set up for that, to use this photo, what I'm going to do, is if you notice in the top right corner of the screen right now, there's a little grid um, and I'm going to tap on that. And once I tap on it, it magically sets up a perspective grid from the photo. Wow. Happens instantly. And then I just say done. And there it is. That is so cool. That's such an incredible tool. Oh my gosh. It really is. I, I just can't believe it works every time because it really does. I've yet, I've yet to stump it. Even wow. with three point perspective photographs and, and also from illustrations, from anything really. Um, so I'm gonna convert this layer to a pixel layer and reduce the opacity. There we go. And now I've got that there. Um, and later I'll snap the grid to drawing when I really start to get into the line work for that stove, which is going to be like tracing. It's going to be so easy. All right. On to Everyone the is very excited about this new tool in chat. Sam says, what witchcraft? Julie says, wow, that's so helpful. Amazing. <laughs> it really is. It's something else. Um, I can't believe it. Yeah. Another good thing here we just added is um, if you look, we have recent brushes at the very top of the list. So any brushes I've been experimenting with in the document all show up here and I don't have to try and remember. What was that brush I used? Yes, they also... I, ha I have been using recent brushes a lot lately. It is so helpful. Wow, I love that tool. It's so great. Yeah. And they show up in, in the order in which you use them, which is really great. And it's a, as far as I've been told, unlimited list. Wow. So yeah, you could use a hundred brushes and they'll all be there. Um, but okay, so I'm going to have the stove. I'm just going to get started here. Here's my pencil. <clears throat> oh, and also, you guys, I thought I'd throw this out there. If you don't know how to download Kyle's uh, Kyle's uh, Photoshop brushes in 
uh, Photoshop, you can uh, have the brush in hand and then right click and then go to the gear icon and then go down to get more brushes and it will open your browser and you can download the brushes. And then in Fresco, I believe it's in the brush menu in the, uh, uh, if you click the plus icon at the bottom, correct, Kyle? Yeah, I'll demonstrate that. It's, it's um, And the nice thing about it in Fresco is that if you choose to use some brushes, you don't have any steps other than tapping on the brush set you wish to use, it'll automatically load them. So if I come here, my brushes at the very bottom, there's a little plus sign. Um, if I tap on that plus sign, you'll see two options, discover new brushes and import from files. If I go discover new brushes, it just pulls up that whole big fat list of 1,900 brushes for you to use. And uh, there are so many. I, I release a new brush set roughly every quarter for everybody. And um, you can see the most recent is winter 2022 right there at the top. Um, and the most popular brush set people usually start with is the Mega Pack. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a very tricky name because Mega Pack does not mean it includes all the other brushes. It's completely separate and unique from every other brush set. A lot of people think, I'll just get the Mega Pack and then I've got everything. Not even close. Um, but it does have a lot of paints and pencils and inks and things. So it's a great place to start. Um, but if I were to just tap on any of these, it would instantly get added to Fresco. And I just find them uh, right here. These are our, our basic uh, default categories on the way down to sketching here from recent to sketching. And under that, it says library brushes. They will show up in this list of library brushes in alphabetical order, so you know how to find them. So you can see that I have way too many brush sets loaded. <laughs> in addition to many duplicates, and the reason for that is that as I'm developing them, I keep importing them into Fresco to test them. And then I forget to delete the duplicate libraries. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I, I have my, my basic character in at this point now. I'm kind of just working on adding in his clothing. Um, I usually draw the character in and then add the clothing on top. Um, so I'm working on the apron right now and I'm just gonna kind of keep uh, refining as I go here. And I'm going to place pig here and I want to have an overlap with the stove a little bit like right about here and I'm thinking he's going to be pretty round pretty portly <laughs> piggy um, oh by the way everyone you might think this is a very specific theme how did we come up with this theme <laughs> <laughs> Um, there actually is a story, a little bit of a story behind that. We couldn't really, we, we weren't really sure what to do for a theme. And I had the random idea to look up what the national holidays, you know, how like we have like a national holiday for every day nowadays, um, actually yeah. it's multiple every day. Um, well, today's uh, national holiday is chocolate souffle. And tomorrow when our second stream will air is pig. So I was like, okay, well, chocolate souffle and pig, what can we do with that? Let's do a pig baker. <laughs> yes. um, so also on top of that, if you guys are ever stumped or uh, feeling like you're in a rut and not knowing what to draw, go to nationaltoday.com and it will have an entire calendar of list of, of national holidays and maybe it'll spark some in inspiration for you guys. I never knew about that website. I didn't either. I just Googled it and it, it's pr a pretty comprehensive website. They have all, a whole list of every single day. How about that? National Today. Yeah. And someone else in my class today, I, I went to teach uh, portraiture today um, at school. Someone turned me on to Earth's, Earth's something. Ah. It's a Instagram um, account that posts photos of people's faces. If you wanna practice drawing faces, mm. it is amazing. 
one different face every day um, from all over the world. Wow, very cool. It was so cool. And these are very high, high quality photos with fairly neutral lighting. So like, you know, it's, you can see the facial anatomy well and just good for practice. Um, Earth's, maybe it's just Earth's faces or something. I can't, I, ah, gosh, <laughs> honestly cannot remember it. Um, but yeah, it looked, it looked so great. I wish I'd known about it sooner. So yeah. Thank you to my student. So many amazing resources, especially I, I, a lot of the time will follow Instagram account, like accounts like that, just to, for inspiration or mm -hmm. anything relating to that. Um, really helpful. Well, I just hope that we still have Instagram resources like that in another couple of years. Cause I'm worried that Instagram is going to be nothing but a TikTok imitator the way things oh. are going. Don't get me started on right? that. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's so difficult. It's getting to be pretty ridiculous. Um, I, I have a hard time scrolling now and not finding something that's just a little video and I'm trying to, yeah. I want to see a still image. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. Oh, but then someone told me something interesting and I hope this is true, that there is a beta of Instagram floating around for certain users that has a linear timeline. Have you heard about really? this? Really? No, yes. I haven't heard about that. Yes. Yeah. That's really interesting. I know. That would make Instagram way more usable. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I hope, I hope that really is going to happen. That would be so great. The cool thing about this perspective grid, it was, it's going to help me to do the right thing when I, I draw um, this pig's feet. I have to remember that, mm. like, you know, I'm drawing them now. Um, on this, on this floor and the floor, you know, I can see how that grid is, is working there. It helps me with the, the, the pig is turned slightly. So I right. know like I need to put these feet in the right spot. And, you know, technically the pig is not turned a hundred percent to the side so that this wouldn't work. I wouldn't put the foot here, but I'm still thinking about, you know, top down, I'm seeing the top of the foot and all that business. And um, this is just a really helpful thing. And I can think about this being a separate uh, set of, vanishing points I'd be working with for that pig. Um, mm -hmm. but the horizon line remains unchanged, which is why it's important for me to, to be wary of that. And, you know, when I'm drawing without some kind of a grid, I try and think about these things, but I'm so often wrong with where I place stuff. I think I've given it plenty of room, you know, and I always underestimate how much things shift. Yeah. You know? Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. I get that wrong all the time. I'm loving your pig's face shape. It has a lot of character in it, even before you've drawn his face, but just the head. Um, oh, thanks. It, it has so much character. Well, you know, uh, credit to this photo I'm using here. <laughs> I'm just changing <laughs> the perspective a little for that head. But it, it, if it weren't for this reference, I really wouldn't know exactly how to do that, you know? And that's the thing about references, you don't have to copy it exactly, but it's going to give you information that unless you've drawn a thing a bunch of times and I've like, don't draw a lot of pigs. Right. <laughs> um, now for the one that I drew for the show, I did not use reference. I was kind of going off this cartoon idea of what pigs look like in my brain. Yeah. I was going to say it looks very, um, very, uh, classic cartoon style. Yeah. I really elongated the ears and mm -hmm. kind of made them pretty skinny. Um, looking at this pig here, I can see that I, I probably could have gone a lot bigger with those ears width wise, but. See, another thing is if this ear is up here, technically this ear should 
be like all the way up here. You know, even though it is it is a different perspective. But that's the kind of thing I would get wrong. Kaylee says, Cody, your new setup is looking legit. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we just set up this live stream background about a week or so ago. So haven't had very many streams with it yet. It does look nice. Thank you. Nice to have a living thing in the background. It is. It is. <laughs> I don't have that. I should I should think about that. You have a really cool rainbow light going on there. <laughs> that was my Christmas present to myself for the sake for the purposes of live streams. Oh yeah. I yes. thought, you know, everybody else on the evangelism team, Paul and Jason and you know, um, oh, yeah. they have cool lighting. <laughs> and I'm always thinking, well, I should do that. So I actually went to Jason for my lighting um, advice, and he told me that he has 17 lights in his studio on oh, come every on. stream. <laughs> oh, I'm not oh. going to go that far. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that does explain why things look so good, though. Yes. Paul, Paul must have a good number, too, because he's, mm -hmm. he's got the multicolor stuff going on and pretty fancy. Now I need to, I'm going to cartoonify these eyes so you can see that they're looking towards you. Mm. I want to have the pig looking at us. And pig's mouths are confusing. They're kind of tucked right underneath the nose. Yes. And again, if you guys, I just wanted to remind you, if you guys would like to um, recreate either mine or Kyle's illustrations, feel free to do so. Just post it online with hashtag AdobeLiveDTIYS. Mostly on Instagram, I'm more likely going to see it. Or you can post it on the Photoshop uh, Discord under the Draw This In Your Style channel. And we will be looking at a few entries on uh, Instagram today. And then we have one entry on Discord as well. Um, so you guys, if you guys want to post them, um, you can post them on Discord and we'll be able to see them as they come in. Um, we'll be checking out some of your guys' entries at the end of the stream. Great. Yeah. So here I'm going to add that little shelf on this side because um, I want to have a little cake sitting there. Oh yeah, so now that you have the perspective grid, you were able to just easily add that in without even really needing to think about the perspective too much. I'm not thinking about it too much. It's it's yeah. I, it's so nice to have those lines. Now later when I go to draw it, I'm going to be really relying on that um, that uh, thing that helps it snaps to your line to ensure that you're really following the grid mm -hmm. accurately. I love that. Um, for now, I'm not even bothering with that because I'm, I'm doing a lot of like curvilinear shapes and um, stuff like that. And I don't want to have to bounce back and forth between locking um, to that, but it will um, come in handy later. Very, very nice uh, feature. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty accurate here. This needs to be a little lower. Um, just do that, adjust that slightly. That's a bit better there. And I'm always saying, you know, this fresco pencil is so nice. If you haven't used it, you're missing out. Is that, that's the default fresco pencil? Yeah, just the default pencil. Oh yeah, that's my favorite. I love it so much. It's great. Feels, you know, like a pencil. The other uh, pencil that I really like using is uh, in Kyle's Mega Pack, it is called Happy HB. That's the one that I'm using currently. It's what I use for all of my sketching outside of fresco. Yeah. 
I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's an oldie, but a goodie. That's a, that one was from 2014. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've been, I have been using it for a while. Gosh, that was, old. I can't believe that was eight years ago. Yeah. I can't believe I've making brushes <laughs> that long. Oh my gosh. I've been using your brushes for probably like seven or eight years. Holy cow. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> All right, now you do have some cool objects in your drawing, which I do want to um, use. So we have this, you have a shelf where there are some other cakes resting. And I, I'm wondering if I might just take advantage of this area up here. But what I could do is extend it out a little ways. Uh, Sam in chat said, yeah, I really like that brush the first time I used it in fresco. Um, yeah, lots of love for the for the pencil brush. Great. All credit to our friend Paul George. He is a brilliant Adobe scientist, engineer, and also conveniently an artist. He likes to paint. And so having somebody who has that skill set, that combo of skills is rare. Mm, mm -hmm. And it was thanks to him that we were able to fine tune the pencil in such a way that it would really be what we wanted. Wow. Yeah. So he was instrumental in making that happen. Um, and we have more pencils eventually coming to Fresco actually in the not too distant future that will be modeled on some code that he wrote. So I'm anxious to get those in play. That's one of the neat things of, about working at Adobe is that you run into people who are engineers, but the reason they're working at Adobe is because they also have an interest in design or illustration. Absolutely. So it's easier for us on the team to communicate with them when there's something really specific that we want like that, you know? Yeah. up here. <laughs> Kevin says, it's interesting how Cody moves her screen around a lot and Kyle keeps his stationary. I do use the rotate tool and I move my canvas around a lot. Um, I am left-handed, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I kind of draw upside down like this is my hand. Me too. Are you left? You're left-handed, Kyle? Yeah, and I do oh, that Oh, that's thing. so interesting. I so, this. oh my gosh, I didn't know that. So it doesn't yeah. have anything to do with being left-handed then. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think if I were drawing on paper, I would definitely be doing what you're doing. And I, it's funny drawing digitally. I, when I started drawing digitally, I was in the habit of not rotating because I started drawing on a cheap Wacom tablet that, you know, I just didn't want to do this and I didn't want to do it. I also didn't do it on screen because I wasn't familiar with that key command. The first few years right. I was drawing, just hit the R key and I just kind of got used to not doing it. Um, I guess now if I do, it's because I want to draw a straight line in some specific direction that feels comfortable for me, mm -hmm. you know, because it doesn't feel comfortable for me to draw left to right straight lines, right mm -hmm. to left, I can pull it, you know, and more vertical too is easier. I can't, you know, horizontal lines. Uh. Yeah. The 
I've got that shelf up there. It took me a while to get that done. <laughs> I'm just gonna <laughs> throw some cakes up there, sitting up there. Just see a couple of those. Conveniently, you do have a, a pattern on the pants, which is similar to the halftone checkered pattern I used. Maybe that I is true. Use we um, did not plan that, but uh, we both ended up adding a pattern. I kind of always try to add some kind of pattern, whether it be on a shirt or the pants or any kind of like little, maybe like little accessory or something. I'll add a pattern because the majority of my textures are pretty flat and hmm. solid. Um, so just to kind of add some interest, I'll add in a little pattern, even if it's subtle. It's a nice thing to do. I don't know if you ever use the halftone brushes. Those can come in handy for some mm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, so far I'm sticking with your hoof sort of idea here. <laughs> the magic what? is trying to get it so it looks natural when like a hoofed animal is holding something. Yeah, I'm like, gonna have it just resting on its it's hand. kind of it's kind of yeah, it's kind of like suspension of disbelief a little bit, or <laughs> he'd yeah. probably be a very clumsy baker, I'd have to say. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> which is not what you're supposed to do when you bake, at least from what I've learned from the Great oh, yes. Baking Show. It's not about <laughs> improv. Exactly. Baking is a science. It's very, yes. it's very meticulous. That's the show that we watch with our kids um, on weeknights. We watch an episode together as a family because it's just, you can watch it with kids. Yes. So wholesome. I love that show. Ah, me too. Unfortunately, we're on season eight now, and I think there's only one season after that, and then we're going to mm. run out of things to see with that. Mm -hmm. but, um, but it's been it's been a good run. Oh, CJ says for uh, uh, us non art people, what is a half tone brush? Shall I demonstrate? Yes, feel free to do so. Okay. Um. Make sure that's saved. Even though Fresco has autosave, I like to like deliberately save. So do I. Yeah, it's always a good thing. Um, so the way the halftone brushes work is, let me uh, just select one for you. Under recent, I was using, I was testing out um, one of them recently or three of them here in this dock. The way they work, is they are going to respond to pen pressure in terms of the density of the halftone. And a halftone is any pattern that you might find in uh, especially comics and manga and things like that. And you used to buy these screens that would have the pattern in them and you would have to rub them down onto the paper oh. to transfer them from the screen to the paper. Um, so they were in sheets, you know, and you would buy these sheets. Some of, some of them were called Zipatone. That was a famous brand. Um, so it would be this transfer process and you would have to then be really specific, like cut out where you want it to be, cut out the shape, place it carefully. Some people still do this. It's a pretty painstaking process. Um, 
So I wanted to re recreate that digitally. Um, and you'll also see, by the way, halftone patterns in newspapers. Uh, if it's black and white and they were do wanted to have, you know, a tone that was a certain value of gray, you would be a dot pattern that would be more or less dense with larger or smaller dots. And then you would see how that would work. Um, in fact, instead of using this brush, I'm actually going to go to the comics category in Fresco because we have about seven or eight of those halftones built in. And for instance, here's a really good one to use to demonstrate the circles. Halftone four, big. So if I were to use light pressure, you see these dots here, right? But if I use more pressure, they get bigger and closer together until you go from this scattering of uh, light dots in a pattern to larger dots. And um, the distance between all the dots remains consistent. It's just that the, as the size increases, you get closer to black. So that gives you this range from light to dark like this. Um, and these were the first to ever exist for Photoshop were the ones that I created as far as I know. So I'd like to take a lot of credit there. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, now, if someone else did create them, I apologize. I just never found them or saw them before and was desperate to create some. And it took me to about two years or so to work out through a bunch of happy accidents, how to make that happen. Um, but you can do things like this, for example, imagine a line, some lines, right? So you can even have them be so faint that they break apart. And then you can get denser and denser and denser and denser and denser until you go all the way to black. It's gonna be really good for various kinds of shading and effects and all that. The pattern, by the way, remains consistent all the way through. So if you were to draw some lines, pick up your stylus and have a sip of coffee and then come back to draw again, you would not have to be like, oh, how am I ever gonna line this up again? You don't have to worry about that. The right. pattern itself is still always in the same place, which is really convenient. Then I can come over an area and use a bit more pressure to make those lines a bit thicker here and then do it again and again and so on. So eventually you can really build up these nice effects. That's pretty much it. And there are tons of them to choose from. There are over 119, 120, I can't remember how many in the original halftone set, which you can grab again from right here. You do a little plus thing, discover new brushes, and you'll find them right there, half tones. And that's that. And same with Photoshop. Very cool. That is yeah. pretty incredible. It it makes it just so quick and simple. So I mean, could you imagine having to, you know, painstakingly draw in a half tone pattern manually? Oh my goodness. No, thank you. That would take no. forever. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to think of the name of the. There's an artist who does the. Um, whoops. Who does the. Um, still does this this old halftone way. Is a, a person still working in comics? Um, gosh, I just can't remember the name. Oh well, it'll probably come to me tonight when I'm like falling asleep. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the best ideas hit you, right? Yeah, always. I like that you had, that's such a nice touch in your illustration, these portraits of the, some like family members, I guess. Oh, thank you. Yes, I actually, when I was doing the sketch, I had put in those frames and I didn't know what to put in them. And my husband was actually the one that suggested doing family portraits. So all credit goes to him. Well, well done then. That was a great <laughs> suggestion. And I'm gonna put one here. I don't know if I'll do two, but um, another thing is, so I'm looking at my illustration. Now, this is my, this is my focal point more or less. I want people to be here, um, but you know, I still want them to notice some of this stuff. So, um, but I'm looking at it, I feel like balance wise, I'm, I'm leaning a little bit too far to the right. It's starting to feel too heavy. Um, I've got this perspective grid in place. So what's great about the way this tool works is I can do this. I can take these layers and merge them together and I can resize them a little bit, right? And I can give myself a bit more air like this 
Um, I'm going to hide this grid for a moment. There we go. And then I can just look at these elements and decide if I want to kind of push things like that a little bit more to the left. Look at it again, bring it down a little bit. That feels pretty good to me now. So having done that, um, the issue I'm going to have is that this no longer lines up with my perspective grid. Mm. But I should be able, if this tool is as great as it's supposed to be, <laughs> and this is going to be one of those things where I break it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's how it always goes. <laughs> I know. Um, but in theory, let me merge these together. I'm going to merge these layers. Uh, I should kind of be able to, from this layer, maybe generate a new perspective grid that actually mm. works. And I think it's possible. So one thing I'm going to do is just draw a line from here to here with a zip line and then snap it like that. Um, and there should be enough information here, I'm thinking, for Fresco to kind of figure it out. So I'm just going to try it. I'm going to tap on here. I'm going to say from the layer, unable to create a grid from this image. Okay. Mm. I was afraid of that. So my backup plan is come back to the stove and simply take that stove, resize it, and move it to where it lines up with my drawing. So get those legs in the right place. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I'm going to create another grid based on that. And I think I should be pretty well set. So I'll say done. And now I'll say I want to create a perspective grid from that layer. So tap on layer, and there it goes. So it's done it again, and sure enough, that grid now will work and line up with my new resized sketch. Wow. So that's helpful. And there we go. And I'm going to snap to drawing for a moment, so I'm going to tidy up my sketch a bit. The first thing I'm going to do is lighten up this frame and get it to feel right. By the way, I'm using the rubber eraser. If, you, if you're not aware, Fresco has multiple erasers, and I like to use the rubber eraser when I use pencil because it just feels more like, you know, drawing with pencil. I don't think I've ever actually used the erasers before. Um, I think I always just end up using hard round for my for my eraser. I, I'll have to try out that, that rubber eraser you're using because it looks really nice. It looks very natural. Yeah, thanks. This is, it's pulled from, it's a variation of a, a brush that was an eraser in the Megapack drawing box. Mm. Um, and there are multiple erasers in here that are good for different things. I think we have 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, yeah, or, or 11. There's even a sponge eraser, which is really neat. Mm. Um, if you use that to erase, you get some pretty nifty effects. Um, but yeah, there we go. So I'm going to snap to drawing and just do this. This is going to make that frame perfecto. Kevin says, looks like Kyle's pig has been eating too much of his baked goods. And then Steve says, that's a sign of a great baker. <laughs> yep. He has been indulging. <laughs> and uh, that's okay. I will say though, it makes me sad. We have a um, county fair here, which like many county fairs sometimes has like the biggest pig that a farmer can bring, you know? Yes. And I always hate that because the pig just looks miserable. They can barely oh, walk yeah. or something. Yeah, exactly. 
animal cruelty, I think. Well, Kyle, I think it is about that time um, okay. to look at community entries now. Let's um, do it. Yeah. I'm going to hop on over to Discord first, I think. I don't know if you guys have posted anything, but I know there was at least one entry over in Discord. And then after that, we'll go over to Instagram. Um, so let me pop on over to there. Let me open it up here. Oh, we do have a couple of entries, uh, a couple more entries on, on Discord. So that's awesome. Let me scroll up here. First from Hugh, um, I I really loved this one. I thought it was super cute. His comment was, I didn't intend for him to look so angry, but that's how it came out. And I said, he is just serious about baking. So yeah. yes, it is baking a serious business, you guys. So great, great entry, Hugh. I really love his little oven mitts too. It looks like if you don't like what I just made, I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this cake in your face. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hugh, for your entry. Wonderful. Uh, then we have Dorina next. Oh, the the oh. Look, facial expression is so great. Love yeah. it. Yeah, that's a happy, happy pig. And <laughs> different angle there, turning the head a little bit, and a much bigger cake, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, definitely. <laughs> always, always a good thing to draw a bigger cake. Of course. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Also added some textures and the half tones in the background too. I see that. I think uh, it's always, yeah, it's always interesting to see how people interpret um, what you've done. I see also that the line art color is different colors. Yeah, colored line art. Very cool. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, colored line art always looks really nice. Yeah. And for this and then, drawing, oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say RB um, uploaded a uh, sketch, work in progress. Oh. Very nice. You got some like little logs for your wood stove very cute oh yeah uh, that's a good detail i wouldn't have thought of that yeah very nice thank you guys so much for your entries now let's hop on over to instagram <laughs> so we just have a couple of entries here so this one is really adorable oh that's nice. <laughs> i like that that's cute <clears throat> It's so just, I love the simple round shapes. Um, it makes it just feel extremely inviting. Um, it kind of has that little bit of a kawaii look to it. Yeah. Um, very, very cute. Thank you so much, Nanped, for your entry. And I love that uh, they incorporated a human character. Maybe that's maybe that's them in the, in the family portrait. I love that. Yeah. Very cute. <laughs> that's nice. <clears throat> And then also um, we have the entry from Ashley Doodles. Um, oh, I wow. really love so many, so many details on this one. Yeah. Um, wow. I really love the town. Yeah. The blonde hair makes me think of Miss Piggy. Yeah. <laughs> Hiya! <laughs> Somebody clip that, please. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Love your uh, all the details on your stove, Ashley, and the little flowers on the apron. Oh, it just uh, it really um, adds a lot of your own personal flair and character to this illustration. So, um, and also you have like realistic pigs in your in your portraits, which is <laughs> which is really a fun twist. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a really um, that's a time consuming illustration right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You got little spices on your your wall shelf here. Yeah, very cute. Thank you very guys. Good details. Yeah. yeah, so much. Um, and then we can also look at some of our older entries as well. We got a couple of entries from our Valentine's Day uh, stream. Um, really loved uh, this one. The textures on this oh, one are really, nice. really beautiful and the, the simple shapes. Um, I really loved this one. That does have a picture book quality to it, a sort of um, a timeless kind of look to it from a picture book. Of, it could be now or it could be 50 years ago. Absolutely. Yeah. Well done. Very well done. Thank you so much for your entry. Um, and then also this one is from Julia Schwartz. Um, she's a regular viewer of Draw This In Your Style. Thank you so much, Julia. Um, I think she's done quite a few of these Draw This In Your Styles. So really love all of the details in this one. So, so beautiful. Um, all of your different chocolates and crackers and flowers. So, so cute. Thank you so much for your entry. Drawing food is always intimidating for me, but I guess not for Julia. 
Yeah, I know. Right. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Especially drawing food and all different perspectives and stuff. Oh, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's also a little heart shaped sucker right here. Super cute. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a good touch. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, that is about it. I also wanted to make an announcement. This Draw, the, Draw This In Your Style project will actually be the last one. Um, I am going to be starting a new show. We're not necessarily end of lifing this show, but I just kind of wanted to change it up a little bit for you guys. And there will be more info on that. Uh, it's probably probably on Wednesday, I'll most likely post uh, some inf more information on that because we'll be starting on Monday with the new show. It'll be weekly. Um, but yes, uh, thank you guys so much for watching and um, we look forward to your entries as well. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kyle. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And we will be back for part two tomorrow. So maybe we'll, we'll start getting into coloring and uh, we can start uh, talking more about maybe color theory and just our process behind choosing colors. Um, and all that jazz. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Don't forget to follow Kyle on Instagram as well. See you later guys. Bye. Bye.